Welcome back, dear friends. Due to technical issues, we are here with another camera. And we're going to begin from the beginning in our study of Good and Evil, Chapter 12 of the book, Mediumship and Attunement. Welcome to Cardiac Radio. The book, Mediumship and Attunement, was psychographed in 1985 to 1986 by Chico Xavier through, by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. And that book tells us about mediumship in ways we've never seen before and gives us new insights so we can calibrate ourselves better. So it talks about tips and hints on how to attune better. And especially this chapter 12 is about studying good and evil. Yes, we're back, friends. What a joy. Technical issues, but the the matter of studying good and evil is very important, right? And we were tested exactly when it talks about stagnating, immobilizing ourselves. But let's go back. Studying good and evil, chapter 12. To be genuine interpreters of the good, it is not enough to give excuses for evil. It is imperative that we take care of evil in an absolute sense, leaving it to its ephemeral condition in regards to real triumph of law, of the law that governs us. Avoid complex mo avoiding complex comments in our worship of simplicity, let us turn to nature. So Emmanuel for us is telling, many times we give excuses about good, about evil that happens in our lives. For example, we talk ill about people and we say, oh, but I'm just saying it's not right. Sister Sheila, in a message titled Alarming Signs, in a book that is yet to be translated, named a ideal Espírita, she says that there are 10 red alarming signs when we, uh, that make us fall into obsession. And amongst them, she says, it's when we talk ill of others, when we think that our pain is stronger than others or more hurtful than others, when we don't do our part, always demanding on people that they have to do theirs, etc., etc., etc. So we cannot give room to evil. In the Spirit's book by Allan Kardec, chapter 1, part 3, Natural or Divine Laws, from question 629 onwards, we'll find the subtitle, Good and Evil. Kardec addressing that issue, saying, the good is always everything that is calibrated with God. It's about the general good. So it's an expansion. The good is an expansion, whereas Evil is a contraction, it's a stagnation, like pride and selfishness. We are retaining that good for ourselves. And Emmanuel is going to tell us what happens when we retain the good to ourselves alone instead of expanding it. Love is expansive. It expands. In the book, Evolution into Worlds, that we have studied here at Kardec Radio, we learn that we're constantly being asked to expand, to expand, to expand, learn more, serve more, love more, learn more, serve more, love more. And when we encapsulate ourselves in a small group of people that we're interested about or little tasks, the little life, we become sick. So then he tells us about the worship of simplicity. 
And Jesus was the master of simplicity. Emmanuel learned about simplicity. So now it's on us to learn the importance of worships, worshiping simplicity too. So he says, let's turn to nature. Take, for example, the living appeal of the spring. How many times has water been treated to serve us at the table? From the spring to the clean jar, a difficult trajectory filled it with vicissitudes and trials. The harsh bed of stone and sand, the poisonous reptile saliva, the insult of large animals, the storm surge, the debris that were thrown at its interior. Water passed through all these issues. However, the spring of water kept on running unpretentiously, without delay in any consideration of sarcasm in the path. Water kept itself diligent and pure, surprising us by accepting the filter that clears its conditions to ensure to ourselves society and comfort. As we have observed in the apparently childish lesson, not only the brook forgot the offenses that were precipitated to its face, it also moved, advanced, humbled itself to help and infinitely pardoned without immobilizing itself for a minute because immobility would constitute adhering to a pool of dirt in which instead of serving it would convert itself into a vehicle of corruption how many times we feel hurt and we stop doing the good oversensitivity is what we're talking about. In Portuguese, we call it milindres. Somebody says no to us, we throw a tantrum. Or somebody corrects us and we throw a tantrum of oversensitivity. It's a no-no. In the book, Jesus in the Home, we have... Our dear friend Neil Lucio reporting passages between Jesus and the disciples during those gatherings, the God at home. And once Jesus was telling about a story of a man that wanted to evolve. So the angel said, yes, go and work in this workshop on earth. He did, then he complained, said, oh, but my boss is too harsh. Next workshop. After five workshops, the angel said, oh, well, if you don't allow yourself to be disciplined, you won't be able to be angelic. And Jesus ends the chapter by saying, those who are under a very strict discipline, they will evolve faster. Nowadays, many parents are failing. Educators are failing. Why? Because they are allowing children to be whatever they think they want to be. Wrong. St. Augustine, chapter 14, item 9, says... Do like the good gardener, the good gardener that takes care of its garden and cuts the shoots when it sees it's going out of the way and takes the weed out. Many people don't do this, even with themselves. Self-indulgence. 
indulgence with the self in the sense of like allowing yourself to go beyond our limits because we pity ourselves, we're spoiling ourselves, thus we spoil others. Spoiled parents will raise spoiled children. Well-educated parents will raise well-educated children. Good teachers will be able to help students to become good students. I'm not saying it's a miracle. It takes effort and repetition, but it's possible to train ourselves to higher levels. But discipline comes first. Spontaneity comes after that's why he's saying here we need to discipline ourselves and he says that's why the christian teaching of charity involves the complete forgetfulness of all evil what is this forgetfulness that we are not going to stop doing the good towards ourselves and others when we ourselves make a mistake as well I'm not going to say, oh my gosh, who am I? Remember, that's the best technique of evil to make us stop. Chapter 40, book Jesus in the Home, the deadly adversary, it says to us. The spirit of darkness tried everything from poverty to vanity, slander. 10,000 things. They didn't make good workers stop until they whispered, as Jesus said, the little suggestion of sadness. When we are sad about ourselves, when we don't approve of ourselves, and then we forget to expand. Forgetfulness of evil is like this. Evil is here, like darkness. There is light. And around there is darkness. I have the option of turning off the light and keep feeling the darkness. Or turning the light more brightly, forgetting that darkness. That's what forgetfulness of evil is. Make light. That's why Jesus said, let your light shine, meaning focus on the good. It's not about vanity. He didn't incite us to self-centeredness. He said, focus on the good, seek the good, feel the good, visualize the good, mold the good with all the resources you have at the end. All the time. Emmanuel then in the next two last paragraphs says, let your left hand ignore the good that the right hand done, that the right hand does. Such words of the Lord induce us to journey on earth, exalting the good by all means within our reach, with complete unconcern of everything that represents our vanity or incomprehension from others. Since the origin of any good gift is only attributed to God. So he say exactly what Jesus said. He's saying, do the good and don't be shy. Because it doesn't come from you. Keep doing it. Oh, but why do you use Facebook every day? You want to show off. Okay, thank you. God bless you. Keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Sharing the good. Right? I'm a child of God. God wants us to share the good. Social media is at our reach. Let's do the good with it. Huh? That's why we have social media. To share the good. Expedite the sharing of the good. If you don't like your news feed on Facebook, little by little unfollow those who corrupt it. You don't need to unfriend, just don't follow. But clean up your newsfeed so you have your own network. 
and you keep receiving beautiful messages, giving and receiving, giving and receiving. That's wisdom to learn how to create a social network that is healthy for us. All the good comes from God. And if people don't understand others, then comprehension, he says. Whisper to them, you can do it too. You should do it too. Use your Facebook every day. If people were doing that more often, the good would be, would have been farther, more expanded. But we're too modest, falsely, because when we're truly humble, we do what we have to do because God wants us to do it. And then at the end, he says, seek your position as faithful servants of the regeneration of the world. Thus, we start from ourselves by renewing our habits and impulses, forgetting the shadows. Instead of saying, oh my gosh, that person. Oh my gosh, I said, what do I need to do? What good do I need to do? Huh? What is the good that others are doing? Seeking the good. Hmm? Unless we are in an educator's position, then we need to go there and correct. But we're not going to focus on what lacks. We're going to focus on the potential that is blooming. Right? And work on this, on unfolding this potential. He says, by renewing our habits and impulses. Habits. Watching TV. Habits. Talking, habits, feelings, habits, thoughts, habits, actions in general, impulses, not patient. Says Sister Sheila, the first sign that we're under obsession, we're impatient. Mm -hmm. And we are falling in the cracks of obsession. But people... Should people have to? Well, but God is not shaking us up and saying, Come on, if all faster. Why do we do this with others? Why? Hmm. Order is important, impatience is another story. Order is one virtue that was even outlined by our dear Ben Franklin in, the, in his 13 virtues. And I'm often mentioning Ben Franklin because he is the mentor of Kardec Radio. And we're doing a program for our children at the Spirit Side of Virginia on the 13 virtues of Ben Franklin. Mm -hmm. So Ben Franklin put it together. We needed to be to follow things and be orderly. Hmm? Have everything, a space for everything. Everything has its time and nothing in nature is abrupt. Everything is gradual. There is order. There is sequence. Easy. People are dreaming about being angels, but being patient regarding being humans. To be human is to tame those impulses. To be human is to put mind over matter. To be human is to be aware of it all. And to make the right choices. That's why we're studying good and evil. That's about being human. We're learning to be human. Angel is something that we cannot grasp yet. Let us seek the light every day, says Emmanuel, aware that any pause in the appreciation of the less dignified landscapes will probably mean inducing ourselves to 
indeterminate stagnation in the imprisonment of imbalance and suffering. Let us seek the light. Oh, seek the light within ourselves. Instead of looking at ourselves in the mirror and saying, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I will never make it. We're contemplating evil. Mm -mm. Seek the light. Huh? Hello, friends. The light, the good. Think of this little, smiley, beautiful yellow friend. When you think of seeking the light, the positive, all the time. Friends, today, I think it's one of the most crowning lessons in this book. For the technical impediments we've had, we conclude. That's a lesson we need to meditate more deeply. Let us read it in the Spirit Book by Kardec, question 625 onwards. Meditate on it and keep this as our lesson. Let's seek the light every day. And do not stop to appreciate things or contemplate the wrong. Neither in you nor in others. Let us keep believing and being investors of the good. You want to be an investor? Be an investor of the good. Take these beautiful gifts that God gives and multiply. And little by little, expanding, we're going to co-create with God at greater levels. For now, let us pray. Shall we, friends? Let us pray together. Right, Rudy, Dona Verducci, Adilson, Daisy, Nora Brasil, Raquel Baques, Carol Correa, friends, let us pray together and ask that we keep working on seeking the good. It's probably the first reincarnation that we are learning to do it consciously. So let us do it together, shall we? Hmm? Thank you, dear God, for the beauty of this lesson, for kindly encouraging us and so firmly at the same time to seek the good. Thank you for investing on us with one more chapter by Emilio through Chico Xavier and by teaching us as you inspire us to be like the water, keep our good intentions pure and make our efforts diligently reaching the goal of doing the good, because that's your law. Thank you for creating us for love, from love, to love. Thank you for teaching us how to love ourselves and one another. We're not concerned about tomorrow or the past because we're learning to be happy on the present, on the discoveries of every minute, the resources that are given, and the beauty of the tasks, the trials, in the transition to our own regeneration. May all those who are at this moment in greater need than ourselves, in need of healing, in need of hope, in need of love, in need of medication, may our togetherness offer crumbs of fraternity and solidarity multiplied by your infinite love, reaching out to everyone who is in need. Thank you for making us equally important, but also important instruments, equally important 
in doing the good. Thank you for making us indispensable in your creation. As we seek the light with you, may we vanish with darkness little by little. And only love remain. And so be it. Thank you, friends. Congratulations for your patience. That was a test of patience for all of us and endurance. A big hug. And until tomorrow, God willing, mediumship and attunement with Emmanuel through Chico Xavier here at Kardec Radio. Big hug, friends. Until tomorrow. <laughs>